This mouse feels like $280. I'm beyond impressed. I personally love this. Super premium, luxurious gaming mouse experience, and they've done that. Oh, oh shit. Oh my god. Dude. Totally forgot. I couldn't buy the fucking Viper Mini Signature Edition. It was sold out in like 30 seconds. Fuck. Well, I don't know. I guess I'll just wake up. Oh yeah. I don't actually need that mouse. I got this thing. So, you probably have not gotten the Viper Mini Signature Edition, and now you're wondering, fuck, when is the fucking plastic version coming out with like 50 grams? And well, good news and maybe bad news, but there is an alternative, and that is this little thing. My name is Mortex, and I'm going to show you the Crafted Mice Samara. There are three different Samaras. The 94, the 104, and the 114. They pretty much differ themselves because of their length. The Samara 94 is 94 millimeters in length, the 104 is 104, and the 114 is 114 millimeters, respectively. Well, now you're wondering, I've never even heard of these mice. Where can I get them? And what's so special about them? Well, the reason you've probably not heard about these mice is because they're 3D printed. And 3D printed mice are uh, pretty much an enthusiast product because who's going out there and trying to like build their own mouse? I mean, come on, that's some kind of like nerd stuff. Who, 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 who does that? <laughs> But if you are nerdy and geeky enough to consider getting something like this, I'm here to tell you a little bit of details about these mice. So, the Crafted Mice Samara. Well, this mouse is made out of 3D plastic. It's made out of PLA plastic. And let me tell you, this thing is really, really fragile. Like, you cannot drop this thing. If you drop this thing, it's most likely going to break. <laughs> So um, do not let it slip out of your hands or out of your table or something like that. Well, since this thing is made out of PLA plastic, this thing actually has like these like, how do I say it? These uh, grooves, as you can see from the um, printing process. So it has this like really unique feel. It's kind of like grippy but not grippy at the same time. It's really like weird. Like, feel like it's dependent on your skin type if this feels grippy or not. So yeah, this is quite unique, but um, you should be aware that this thing can catch some scratches really easily. So um, do not like scratch with your fingernails or something like that. And also another thing to mention about the PLA plastic is that this uh, plastic is really affected by heat. So do not like use a um, heat gun or like a hair dryer to uh, remove the mouse gates or something like that. Try and just like remove it carefully with a knife or with your fingernails or something because um, yeah, this plastic can uh, deform itself at like 60 C. And yeah, like if the sun is shining uh, directly onto your desk or something like that, do not like have your mouse right into the sun, just, just to be safe. So every Craft in My Samara has a width of 57.4 millimeters around the middle. This goes for the 114, 104 and 94. Same goes for the height. Um, all of the Samaras have a height of around 38 millimeters at the highest point. So the only real difference in shape is the length, which is 114 for the 114, 104, like I told you. The Crafted Mice Samara uses the Razer Viper V2 Pro's internals, so you need the shell and the Viper V2 Pro to build your own Crafted Mice Samara. 
Since the Razer Viper V2 Pro is the mouse with the best internals on the market, right next to the Viper Mini Signature Edition of course, which you probably don't have and probably don't want to spell, spend around 400 bucks to get it, this is a really, really nice mouse. To disassemble a Razer Viper V2 Pro, you need a Torx T6 screwdriver. You can pretty much get like a screw, screwdriver kit on Amazon for like really cheap. And then you need to use a, yeah, a Torx T6. And of course, a normal Phillips screwdriver. I'm not really gonna show you how to disassemble a Viper V2 Pro. There are, are plenty of uh, videos showing you how to disassemble one, especially like Bearded Bob or something. So just skipping, skipping that part. If you want to learn how to do it, there are plenty of videos. As you can see, the um, Crafter My Sumera uses the screws from the Viper V2 Pro uh, in the mod kit. So you're taking the Torx T6. Well, I need to disassemble. It's only these two screws on the bottom plate. Just take them out and you can easily open up the shell. It's really like any baby could do it. So as you can see, this is the uh, Razer Viper V2 Pro's internals and you could use a different kind of battery with a free pin. You could find those on Amazon and use a lighter one, but I didn't feel like it. I, I just used a stock um, battery because especially uh, using the 4K Hertz dongle, which I have right here, um, the battery consumption is quite high. So I still want the uh, stock battery. Now you can also see that the um, PCB is mounted with two screws, which are also in the Viper V2 Pro. And I'm just gonna take these out real quick. So once you've taken these out or put them in respectively, taking it out is really easy because um, there's this like sort of like security latch right here printed where you can, where you like slide in the PCB like that. And then you just align the holes of the PCB with these holes. And then you just screw the screws back in there together. And it pretty much holds the uh, PCB perfectly. One neat little feature of this mouse is that you can pretty much choose where to put the battery. So you could put it on the back uh, on the Samara 114, or you can put it on top of the sensor. So depending on if you want the weight balance more in the middle, or more spread out, more evened out, you can choose that. I prefer um, in the back, so it's more evened out. As you can see, this mouse is not using the uh, stock rubber uh, rubber ring, it's using a white one. Um, you can get those on AliExpress for like really cheap. So on most mice, they're using um, size ring size nine. All you have to do is uh, search for silicone rings and yeah, take the color you want, wait a couple of weeks, and then you're getting them. But of course, if you don't want to wait uh, for weeks, um, you can also choose your desired um, silicone ring as uh, an extra order uh, if, you're, if you decide to buy this mouse. So as you can see, the mouse weighs in around 48 grams, the Samara 114, 44 grams for the uh, 104, just too lazy to reassemble the mouse. This is just pretty much the same weight. And 41 grams for the Samara 94. So now that I've uh, reassembled the mouse, we can talk about more details. Well, first of all, this mouse does not like bulge or anything. This mouse is actually sturdier than you might think, despite it being 3D printed and what I've said about do not drop the mouse. In fact, you can actually like press around the middle with like no problems, like I'm actually like really pressing it, but nothing really bulges or creaks or anything like that. And same goes for, for the clicks, like you can like really press hard, but still I wouldn't, I wouldn't really risk it and there's no reason to press the clicks that hard anyways. And yeah. And also there's literally like no wobbling or anything, like no shaking of the uh, battery or something like that. Like it just sticks, it still sticks really well. Like after you've taken out the uh, battery because it's like, there's like an adhesive uh, below the battery when you take it out from the uh, Viper V2 Pro, it still sticks really well. And if it doesn't anymore, you could just get double-sided tape and 
yeah, pretty much put it back in. What's kind of a double-edged sword for this mouse are the mouse clicks, because now they're actually amazing. Like, as you can see, there's like almost no pre-travel and no post-travel, which is like crazy. Like, like it clicks and you can't even like press it further. It's like, it's like perfect. And pre-travel, maybe like half a millimeter before actuating. And that's like crazy. I, I pretty much know no mouse that has clicks that are so short distanced. So here's one more sound test. But why I'm saying that these clicks are double-edged sword is they're really like not that easy to get used to. Like there are some situations where you like hold the mouse click and even like slightly like relieving pressure is enough to like deactuate the mouse. Like I, I don't use toggle for right clicks when I play FPS, uh, when I play Overwatch 2, Widow or something. I hold right click to uh, scope and in some situations, when I got the mouse, it was like, oh shit, I actually like accidentally de-scoped, even though I didn't want to. Like, at the beginning, this could be a disadvantage, but if you get used to it, it's it's really nice. Like, like you have no actuation and no deactuation, so the click is just feels that much more um, instant. Now, talking about the shape. The shape is pretty much a well here's a Zowie S2 for reference this mouse pretty much reminds you of a Viper Mini and a Zowie S2 uh, the shape is like a Zowie S2 but the size is like a Viper Mini so in my opinion this thing is pretty much a Zowie S3 so from the side profile perspective you can see that this mouse has a has the hump further on the back just like on the Zowie S2 and on the Viper Mini so it's not really comparable to um, Zowie FK2 styled shapes like the final mouse where the hump is in the middle. I have 18 by 9.5 centimeter hands. So pretty much like a medium sized hand. And for me, the Samara 114 at least is really great like for relaxed claw and also for fingertip, which are my uh, two main grip styles. The shape of this mouse um, compared to the Viper Mini and uh, S2. One thing that I really like about the shape, just like for, uh, on the Zowie S2, is that on the uh, uh, further end of, of the mouse, there's no, uh, there's no really, not really like a curve, uh, like in the Viper Mini. There's like this overarching curve that if you like relaxed claw, you can like feel this like overarch on your ring finger and on your pinky which is like really distracting. Like you can't really just get a real grip to it. But on the Zowie S2, however, um, and on the Samara 114, this like slope doesn't exist. It's, it's, it's a really minor slope. And uh, you can just like put your ring finger and uh, pinky onto it. And it feels like, like really straight. And yeah, it's that's, that's like a really nice, nice grip if you use a uh, straight ring finger and a straight pinky and not do this like weird uh, claw grips which just give you <laughs> carpal tunnel pretty much. But if you use a curl pinky and a ring finger, it pretty much also just still works like a normal mouse. You can still do that. So again, shape wise, this really comes close to the S2 and the Viper Mini. So if you like these sh shapes, this is gonna be like a really nice tiny bit smaller edition of these like a Zowie S3 like I said the hump is pretty much the same as the Zowie S2s so it's tiny bit higher than the uh, Viper Mini which is quite comfortable in my opinion but yeah what really makes the mouse is this uh, straight slope because the grip is just perfect for a uh, relaxed claw and yeah fingertip uh, like the width of the middle is really nice. There's like no like overarching slope like on the Atlantis V2 or on the uh, 
uh, XM1 where the sides are like overarching and it's like a, there's like a top curve to it. I don't like that. Uh, I don't like that for fingertip, uh, but still that's just personal preference. But yeah, if you like uh, straight sides, this mouse is gonna be really good. Speaking of the um, Samara 94 and the Samara 104, well, there are smaller versions of the 114, but in my opinion, these mice are, how do I say it? Not really um, optimized enough yet. Since the Viper V2 Pro's uh, sensor is pretty much fixed, there's no turning around uh, adjusting the position of the sensor in relation to the mouse clicks. And this causes uh, like smaller um, shaped mice for fingertip, like the uh, Samara 94, to have a more downward sensor position. This can be disadvantageous or it could not really affect your aim. Like you can get used to a more downward sensor position, but in my personal experience, it kind of still throws me off no matter how much I try to adjust with it. With the 104, it's kind of the same story. Like uh, it's a lot, it's a bit more centered, but still more in the back. I can get used to it. I can use this mouse and it's pretty fine, especially for fingertip. But um, I do actually prefer the 114 as my main because I use my um, ring finger and my pinky, like I said, like straight when I'm uh, relaxed clawing or when I'm finger tipping. And for that, I need more like range in the back so I can do these like micro corrections with my hand, as you can see, like something like this. Like I'm using my ring finger and pinky to like do micro corrections. And I like on Zowie S2, S3 shape mice, like the 114, I use these like this like more in the back to um, do nicer little uh, micro correction circles pretty much. And yeah, obviously um, the Samara 94, you can only fingertip grip. And well, if you fingertip grip on the far back, this like slope, this like curve on the back, this is really distracting in my opinion. I, I do not really understand the design choice of doing that. I feel like you could have uh, like straighten this out a bit more. Um, it's not really that comfortable for far back fingertip at least. And well, <laughs> relaxed claw with this mouse, you can pretty much forget that. As, as, unless you have really small hands. And with the 104 as well, uh, I cannot really um, relax claw it. It's, it's a tiny bit too small. So I'm just gonna stick with the 114 for both fingertip and for, um, for relaxed claw. One huge negative aspect of this mouse was the uh, way the click was implemented. Because as you can see, this is like the, um, this is like the click mechanism and uh, you're supposed to take one of these screws, which is inside the uh, Viper V2 Pro. There are like four in total or I think six. And you take two of those and you screw them where the click mechanism is. Like this, this part touches the mouse click. And the reason for that is because of inconsistencies in the uh, way uh, 3D mice are getting printed. So to get this like perfect uh, distance between uh, each mouse click where pre and pro step travel are pretty much non-existent, um, you use these screws and screwed them in a way that uh, was offsetting the uh, printing inconsistencies. So you, uh, if you had a, like a tiny bit longer stem here, you would uh, not not turn it like really far down. And if it was like really short, you would turn it like less. And that way you would find the perfect click feel. But the negative point about that is that this is metal. And what happens if metal touches plastic? The metal destroys the plastic of the mouse switch. Uh, these are the original V3 switches of the Razer Viper V2 Pro. And they are pretty much screwed. <laughs> you know, like, screw. Well, um, yeah, they're pretty much done for. I cannot use these anymore. 
I use these really extensively with the original um, implementation where there was a screw in here. And by repeatedly clicking and using the mouse, the plastic just wore off. And now uh, you can't even properly use them anymore. And that really, really sucks. So what I did was uh, order V2 switches from AliExpress. You can get five pairs of V2 switches for around 28 euros and plus, plus shipping, which was like, I think shipping was free. I'm not really sure, but it's not really a lot. I just had to wait for like a month till they are here. Um, well, and now I'm using V2 switches instead of V3 free switches. So after I told uh, Crafted Mice about this issue, uh, one of the producers of the Samara from Crafted Mice, uh, who's called Cool, uh, told me to use um, these AliExpress dot skates. Like you get like uh, pre-applied dot skates uh, on the mod kit or on the uh, whole mouse if you buy it. And well, you can also like get dot skates from Amazon. I'm gonna talk about these later. And I used three of these on top of each other. And this is my new click solution now. And it works like really great. Like there's no problem with it. Uh, and now it's uh, plastic on plastic. So there's no wear and tear on the mouse switches at all. And this is gonna be the uh, future click implementation of this mouse. So this is like stem right here. This is gonna be like circular, not square. No, no hole to put the screws in, but instead uh, you're gonna get some extra alley dot skates and then you can like choose if you wanna use two or three. So you can like find this perfect click feel balance. And just like I said, a little side note, these are like AliExpress skates. I really like them. You can get like 40 of these for like three euros and 50 cents plus shipping, which is like one or two bucks. You need to wait a while to get these, but um, these are really good. Like I can really recommend them. Uh, there's like this plastic foil on them. You have to like peel them off. Most people forget to actually peel off the like plastic foil, which is like on top of the uh, dot skates. And uh, then you're good to go. These are like really nice. Just a, just a little side note. I'm also gonna put like links to these dot skates uh, in the description and also for these like rings and stuff. I get no money for it, but I feel like, I don't know, if it's it's such a waste for you to like spend 10 bucks on like core pads or tiger eyes or BTLs or whatever. If you can get like 40 of these for like three euros, like I have 200 left. Like I have dot skates for my entire life. And these are like really good. Speaking about the overall performance of the mouse. Well, I have no notable like issues about it whatsoever. Like, um, the distance between the uh, sensor and the uh, um, mouse pad is not really affected by the uh, base plate or such. Like you can use uh, one millimeter on Razer Synapse or two millimeters or three millimeters. Uh, each of them work and there's not, not really a problem. Um, so yeah, no wobbling. Um, the sensor performance of the Viper V2 Pro is still the best. Like there's no arguing about that. The latencies, the motion latency, the click latency, they're all pretty much the best. They only get bested by the Zaugenkönig M2K or the uh, Viper Mini Signature Edition. So yeah, the scroll wheel also works wow. really fine. Like there's no uh, problem with each step or something like that. One huge <laughs> downset about this mouse for a lot of people would probably be that this mouse has <laughs> no side buttons. Like it has no side buttons. For me, there's no problem with that because I don't use side buttons. I don't like using side buttons. I feel like they get in the way of actually properly holding a mouse. That could be um, a point of discussion for sure. Like a lot of people need side buttons to use melee or weapon switching or stuff like that in video games. But for me, they just cause a huge sort of like distraction when I'm trying to like properly grip a mouse. I like having no side buttons. So it's not a problem for me, but that I can totally understand if people say that that is a complete deal breaker for me and I need my side buttons, otherwise I can't play the game. So yeah, that of course is a deal breaker for this mouse because this mouse has no side buttons. However, keep in mind, um, my version is actually like a full shell version. So there are like no holes as you can see, which uh, 
adds quite a bit of weight. I feel like four or five grams. So there's like, you can like customize your order. You can like choose where you want to have the holes or where you don't want to have them, like on the back or on the sides. I chose to have no uh, holes because these like three or four grams, they don't really mind me too much. And especially for the um, base plate, having no holes, you can pretty much use any sort of um, mouse gate solution that you want. So you're not forced to use only dot skates. You can also like get uh, BTL skates from for the super light or for the Zawe FK2 or something like that and just slap them on. Now, what is my final conclusion for the Craft and My Sumera? Well, first of all, this mouse is not that cheap. The mod kit itself, whether you take the Sumera 94, 104 or 114, is 65 euros plus shipping and depending on in which country you live the shipping prices can actually be quite hefty not only that um, you're not buying the mouse off of any company or something like that there's a discord group uh, from crafted mice and well yeah it's, it's not a company they're just like these two guys that like to do um, 3d printed mice and you're not really insured like you, they will definitely send you the mouse like they have a lot of positive reviews, especially for the um, Starlight uh, final base that they made. There's, there was like this base plate, the, uh, 3D printed base plate for the uh, final, final mouse uh, Starlight, in which you could use to put um, the Viper V2 Pro internals into a super light uh, Starlight. So yeah, they have a lot of positive reviews from uh, customers. So they are trustworthy. Like uh, I've talked with them a lot. They're like really cool people. But in the end, I have to be honest, like it's not a company, you're not insured. If the package gets lost or anything, I'm not really sure how, how they're gonna handle that. I think they're gonna still send you a new one, but yeah, it's, it's quite a risky endeavor to um, order something like that. I'm, I'm gonna be honest, like, it is a really niche enthusiast product. And if you're not down for that, if you don't wanna spend like 65 euros plus shipping just for the mod kit or 200 euros in total for a um, pre-assembled mouse, like a final one with V2 Pro internals and whatnot, then yes, I would suggest to stay away from it. But if you're an enthusiast and you want a really light, really well-made mouse with insane clicks and like an amazing shape that is not really on the market yet at least from my perspective maybe there are like chinese knockoff mice that are similar to this mouse but in my opinion this is like a zowie s3 a mouse that is smaller than the zowie s2 it feels different compared to the uh, razor viper mini and yeah it's just like a fusion between the zowie s2 and the razor, Ra razor viper mini so if you like these type of mouse shapes with a uh, further back and like quite a small profile then the Samara 114 at least is a really strong recommendation from me and it is currently the main mouse that I use for uh, gaming. The Samara 104 and the 94 on the other hand are really really niche especially because of the sensor position. You have to really get used to that or you have to have a specific grip in which you think that you can capitalize the sensor position properly. And I also want to point out that I am not sponsored by Crafted Mice whatsoever about this review. And also I have paid for these free mod kits with my own money. So this review is my 100% personal opinion. So this has been my uh, review for the Crafted Mice Sumera. I'm not really sure if I would do uh, more reviews like this about mice or keyboards or any sort of like peripherals like that or if I would do like gaming content. You can follow me on Twitch if you'd like to. And yeah, um, if you liked the video, please give it a like, please subscribe, the old Jimba Jabba, you know, you know how it is. I would still really appreciate that. Um, I think I'm gonna do more videos and yeah, see you next time.